Hi, this is Kim with Hatch Embroidery. In this segment of our Apple a Day series, we are going to add lettering to our simple apple. You can do all the techniques that I'm going to show you in this segment with the basics and monogramming lettering levels. First of all, make sure that you have your machine and your hoops set up. You will find that at the top of the screen. I need to select my hoop. Okay. Uh, once I have that done, then I will start with my simple apple. Now I already have my simple apple on the screen and I've resaved it to simple apple number two. First thing, let's resize it so we can click on it. We click on it and everything is selected because it's grouped together. I can tell that if I turn true view, true view off. Remember that in monogramming level, everything will come in grouped. That is a monogramming in the basics level. Not so when you get to the editing and digitizing capabilities with that. Although you can make that happen if you prefer it that way. So I have everything grouped. I have it selected. I know it's selected because I can easily see the handles going around on the outside. Once I have it selected, then I am going to resize it. I'm just going to do a quick resize today. So I will go up and use my 10% icons, and that will increase the size 10% proportionally. Um, looking at the overall size, I can see that it's about 3 by 4 inches. So I'll go ahead and just keep making it a little bit larger. Now, it's outside my hoop, so I'll go back and I'll reduce it 10%. I'll ask it to show all or to fit to zoom. So I'm just going to save this real quickly at the top because this is number two and this is the size that I want it. The next thing we're going to do is to add lettering. So I will go over to the left hand side, click on the lettering toolbox, click on the lettering tool, and then on the right hand side my object properties for lettering will open. I will type in my name. Okay, now notice your name may or may not end up in the center of your apple. Now the reason is, is that when you type a name, it will always go to the center of your design window. So I can look at this bar at the bottom. I know that's my center regardless of the size of my window. And you can see that it's lined up in there. The reason it does that is because most of the time you're not going to be putting letters in the center of a design. So you may have moved your design off of the screen a ways or over so that you could add your lettering to it or up or down. And uh, you don't want your lettering to go off screen uh, with the rest of your design. So it will always come to the center. This way you can find it. If it's no problem, I'll just click it and then I'll move it approximately where I want. We're going to try a lot of things, so I'm not going to worry about the position of it so much right now. Um, I don't want it to be black, so with it selected, I'm going to go down to the uh, color palette and I will select blue because I think I would like for this name to be blue. I want to move the name down a little bit, so I'll just position it where I want it. I want it to be a little bit bigger, so I'll go up to the 10% size, make it as big as I want. Once I have it the size I want it, then I'll go back and uh, center it, see if it looks good. Now, that's a very simple design. You can actually be ready to sew, that, sew out on your garment or backpack, whatever you might be using for your back to school today. Well, there's one more thing I want to show you about this. And in this particular one, I want to show you about slanting these letters. If you move down to the advanced in your object properties, click on the slant and let's type in 35 degrees. Notice that that has put it in 35 degrees. That's a little bit too much, so I think I'll type in 25. Be sure to press the enter key after you have typed your number in so that it will apply it. All right, I like that. I think I want it to have a little bit of slant. It's the size I want it. I'll position it and then I am ready to save it. I will save it to my 
MV format first, as we talked about in the previous video, and then I will export it to my machine file format. Stay tuned because next I'm going to show you about monogramming.